that Archon. He's just so hot right now. God, these get worse every week, I swear. Oh yeah, I forgot to turn the sound down on this. Looks like I messed up. <laughs> that was 25 weeks of karma right there, Frank, for uh, <laughs> making fun of you. This episode's in shambles. Uh, <laughs> the sound was bad. Nick's been frozen for the past 20 minutes, but we haven't told him. <laughs> <laughs> what? And, is uh, Mike even on? I don't feel like it has been for 25 episodes. <laughs> you guys just don't even listen to me. Nick, you should restart. Maybe. I don't even know what you should do. He's not frozen. I can see a point. Oh, okay. He's only frozen on my screen. My bad. Go ahead. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 25 of Esports Canada TV. I'm your host, at Quinn of the Nets. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. As well, my two ho lovely co-hosts. He's going to say a different word there. <laughs> no, it wasn't. At ESC Jovian and at ESC Songers, how you doing tonight? I'm well, thanks. How are you, Johnny? I'm doing fantastic. We're at 25 episodes. That means we're legally allowed to do pretty much everything in the world except run for president. How old do you have to be to run for president? Uh, like 35. Uh, John will probably ask you that question later as our um, one American <laughs> on the panel. <laughs> how are you with American history? Uh, it is 35. 35. Mm. Wow. I'll take it. Never Guys, we have a special episode tonight. We have two fantastic guests representing the International Gaming League, uh, E.L. Toledano, and I hope I didn't butcher that last name. That's pretty good. Pretty good. And from Esports Solutions, as well as IGL, Mr. John Clark. Great Hello. to be here. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's really great to be here. Uh, we're going to start off with just some soft questions, and for the interest of uh, keeping it um, non-confusing, we'll do EL first, and then John can answer second. Uh, okay. No bias towards Americans, I, I promise. Okay. <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> Say the I'll best go for last. Introduce myself. Pardon? I'll introduce myself, I guess. Uh, yeah. The first question is just, who are okay. you? Where are you from? And how'd you get involved with esports in general? Okay, so uh, I'm Al Toledano. Um, I'm co-founder and CEO at International Gaming League, uh, which is a new startup in the esports space. Um, I'm from Montreal, Canada, which is loosely regarded as the city uh, of game development. I'm currently living and working out of Montreal. Um, I hold a business technology management degree from John Molson School of Business, uh, though I am mostly educated from uh, my past experiences. Fantastic. John, and you've got a big, to you, John. way bigger CV than I do. <laughs> <laughs> it is an hour yeah, show, John. So. I'll give the abbreviated version. I've been in esports uh, for 15 years. Uh, I keep I keep adding years onto that every show. Just it sounds better. <laughs> uh, but no, my name is John Clark. I am um, doing a lot of marketing uh, at IGL. I, what is my official title, by the way? Uh, you're the marketing director. The marketing director, that's what I thought. Okay, just double checking. Uh, and the marketing director at IGL, and um, as well as a guest CEO, founder of Esports Solutions, uh, which is kind of um, a LinkedIn slash Craigslist slash, uh, you know, monster job board for uh, connecting, uh, you know, people that are just getting started in esports to organizations that are looking to hire people or bring people on for different gigs, get them an opportunity for exposure. I am a, f uh, a father of two, a um, full time father. I play soccer in my free father. time, a part time husband. And uh, no, I'm joking, I'm a full time husband <laughs> as well. My wife wouldn't like that. And uh, that's about it, pretty much. John Clark, you're the original hipster of esports. You were into it before it was cool, so. Uh, well, for me, it was cool back then as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> good answer. Yeah. Correct. That's a bonus point for the lightning round, but we'll get to that later. Uh, guys, the the topic we brought you on for was your involvement with the International Gaming League. Um, I've had a chance to go on your site. You gave us some beta access, and uh, I've poked around and, and kind of know what it's all about. But for anyone watching who doesn't know what IGL is, the International Gaming League. Can you tell us um, what is IGL and, and how did it start? Sure. Um, so we like to think of, of IGL as uh, your destination for amateur esports. So we're looking to provide the competitive gaming uh, experience really to everyone, 
not just the one percent of pro gamers you know who play at international levels or in pro leagues uh, so what we do really is we add value beyond current game content so we'll create communities around the games that you love uh, i.e. Call of Duty, League of Legends, Dota 2, Starcraft, etc. Um, and we'll actually organize competitive events for you, uh, segregated by skill level, uh, so you can enjoy gaming without, you know, getting your hand, your ass handed to you. Um, <laughs> so we found a really big demand for organized league play. Uh, organized league play, competitive ladders, uh, you know, tournament events uh, for AAA video games. Uh, and we hope to provide really an added value online service that helps consumers elevate their game. Um, and as well provide our business to business partners uh, with an opportunity to increase engagement for their titles as well as daily active use for current and future titles. Uh, so what currently what we're doing is we're building the platform um, and we're looking at an open, open beta sometime in late March. Now you say you come from a business background, was it something, did you have kind of the marketing business passion first and saw, hey, there's a huge chance here with esports, the rise of MLG and global competitive play, or was it you were a huge gamer first and it was, well, I have these business skills, maybe I can kind of link the two together? I think probably somewhere in the middle. Um, I've definitely been involved in, in some degree of electronic sports for a very long time, either as a player, as a spectator, or as a manager. Uh, I did compete at ESL uh, Europe for a little while uh, for Quake-based games, uh, but obviously my skill uh, my skill cap became very apparent, uh, <laughs> so I decided to kind of give that a little a little pause. Um, but as you say, um, I'm a marketing guy, uh, so somewhere down the line, um, I decided that I wasn't happy myself uh, with the current platforms that were available. I wasn't at all happy with the infrastructure in esports. I was seeing the obvious defects, the obvious flaws. Lots of holes to plug, um, and eventually an opportunity presents it, presented itself, uh, and I decided to join the Imperium Gaming League project, which is where IGL was born uh, back in December 2010. So since then, we've actually, um, my co-founder Daryl uh, and I, we, we were able to put together a prototype really, really quickly uh, back in 2010, um, and quickly, surely enough, the prototype did really well, so we decided to kind of uh, break down that sandcastle and rebuild it up with some bricks uh, so that it could, you know, with, withstand the test of time and hopefully grow really, really fast, really, really big. Mm -hmm. um, so thankfully, my, my business acumen took me to the point where I could, I knew what to do, um, and that's where we are at today, a big project. And John, how did you get involved with the project? Was DL coming to you knowing that you were kind of involved with esports all this time, or did you hear about the project and, and want to jump on board? Yeah. Actually, I heard about the project and wanted to, to come on board. I had, I had just left, um, well, was basically kind of uh, laid off. I mean, it's, it's no secret from uh, the Cyber Sports Network, which was another company looking to do uh, something very similar. Uh, but they had decided to take a, a completely different direction um, shortly after we got back from uh, running the, uh, the BYOC at QuakeCon. So um, after that, they wanted to take a new direction and chose to do so and and it didn't fit with with you know with what my plans were so mm -hmm. it was time to move on it was probably you know it was a very very good thing because I had an opportunity to to jump on board with this project and I reached out and um, they liked me enough and said I was old enough to present myself to <laughs> other people so it worked out well I wanted to comment a little bit uh, on what I was saying because you know some people are going to ask what what makes what we're doing here any different than what you can get at like game battles or you know the ESL online or uh, you know ESEA you know what mm -hmm. makes it any different and one thing that's been missing for years uh, for several years now um, well literally missing is is the CPL or Cal you know if if, if you remember that far back past StarCraft two. Um, <laughs> And the whole idea at you know for Cal at the time was the Cal League was this this feeling that you were not you were not just a number you were a part of a community and you were a part of an opportunity to to grow and to elevate your game to a new level and to to get to a next tier 
And that's something that's been missing in, in esports for the last few years because the focus has been so much on, you know, the very best, the very top. It's all been about media. And there's, there's not really anything wrong with that. I and mean, we've had an explosion of it because of um, streaming opportunities. And it's, it's, really, it's really put our, uh, our little community at the forefront of a lot of different, you know, places that it, it, it didn't used to be. And so that's a very good thing. But what's missing is is the structure underneath of it so that we can grow past this little um, this little spurt of, of media growth because once that kind of uh, fades or it levels off we're going to need to to have a base to grow from and that's 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 what this is going to you know what IGL is going to offer is is that that feeling again that when you join a league um, you're not just a number on page six of a ladder Mm -hmm. You are, you know, it's going to be tiered in, in, in ways that, that allow players to, to find skill levels that they're more comfortable playing with. And, and obviously, you know, you get your ass handed to you a couple times, you <laughs> just want to give up. And, and we, you know, it's not that we want to just, you know, baby everyone and give them an opportunity to win all the time. It's that we, we just want there to be growth. And you can't have growth if, uh, if people aren't playing. And so the idea is to get people playing more. And I think this... Um, the the project when I when I when I heard about it when I had a chance to really dive in in deep with what it you know the goals and the vision of it it was it was right in line with what I've been talking about for you know probably the last seven years in, in esports so it was a very good opportunity for me. I still remember the first day that I got invited into a Cal game or got vouched into a Cal game in Dota. And I was like, this is the greatest feeling ever because right. obviously I wasn't pro. But I was like, I was just happy to be pulled out of like just the regular pool and be part of something else. So That's yeah, right. that was a really awesome feeling. Yeah, it, um, the incentive didn't, it didn't take money to, for you to get there, did it? I mean, no. you, the incentive itself was an opportunity to, to elevate to the next level, you know, to move up. You're like, oh, sweet, I'm Cal yeah. I or I'm Cal O, you know, or whatever, so whatever <laughs> tiers that were there. So yeah. I think that's a lot of what we're, what we're shooting for as well. Oh, nostalgia. If you could just take me back a few years, too, and make me play the way I used to, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, I agree. So in uh, you guys, you, if I'm not mistaken, IGL started primarily in Montreal. How far does your, ex your reach extend, and um, how far do you want it to extend? Are you looking international and national? What are you looking at? So, you know, IGL was actually incubated at FounderFuel, um, which is a top-tier accelerator based in Montreal. Um, and FounderFuel itself, the accelerator, is part of a bigger network called the Global Accelerator Network. Uh, and that, that network really counts very big names like Y Combinator in California, which Twitch came out of, FYI, um, Techstars in Boston, etc. Uh, so safe to say we've, had, we've been introducing esports to a lot of really important people, uh, namely Brad Feld, Austin Hill. Uh, those people are web entrepreneurs that have done it in the past. They know what works um, in terms of internet. So when you want to take an opportunity online, they know what it takes for you know they, they've had that they have that that mind um, that you as a young entrepreneur completely ignore uh, most <laughs> of the time you think that you know you have the best idea this is going to change the world et cetera et cetera et cetera uh, you know they were there to really bring us back down to earth uh, and and teach us the way of, of the entrepreneur uh, so in terms of of IGL as a company we've definitely been booming quite a bit. Um, and because going to that accelerator really allowed us to make sure that when we decided to go out with the product, uh, that we would be making a big enough wave that it would matter, uh, and that you know at that point we would be reaping the benefits of of our endeavor. Uh, in terms of IGL as a product, uh, the reach we hope to extend is international by by all means, as the name suggests. <laughs> However, what we're doing is uh, we're looking to start the launch process in North America. Uh, which obviously represents an enormous opportunity with you know the ascendance of MLG and League of Legends. Uh, so investors are starting to take notice. Uh, money is becoming a little bit more easy to come by, um, and it's really the right place and the right time to get started with something like this. Uh, so once we have our, our ducks aligned and you know a product that is fully functional, that is scalable, that is robust, uh, we'll we'll be starting considering growth outside of North America at that point. That's awesome. Um, I wish you guys all the success with that. Um, you guys, you said that you're going to be releasing sometime mid March. Is that right? Uh, we're looking for an open beta late March. So late March, last last week, sometime like that. Okay. 
Um, I also want to touch on this idea because you were talking about it uh, earlier, and I've been hearing this a lot. It's almost like um, resonating amongst most uh, gamers that I've been talking to, at least. Um, we had uh, one of the organizers from My Intent, Shane Parmley, who came on and said he he's has trouble giving all this money to big content uh like sending his players and, and spending all this money to send them to major tournaments instead he wanted to do more of a creating content for his old players at the bottom because he had said there's this idea of us spending money at the top and then we're just having expanding and contracting uh bubbles all the time so i think that you guys uh or at least you've mentioned how you're a proponent of uh uh this the amateur approach. working with the bottom up yeah so maybe mm -hmm. And I think you also touched on that as well when you were talking about Cal and the leagues and stuff. But why is this bottom-up approach so important? Why is uh, why is this almost new focus uh, kind of a buzz right now? I'll, I'll let John chime in on this in a second. But my personal thought and opinion on this um, is that our approach is pretty much the polar opposite of what you would see with MLG, with IPL, IEM. Obviously, those are events. They're not leagues. And this, the two are very, very different. Uh, but at the end of the day, they are esports ventures, ventures, and at the end of the day, they grow exactly the same. Um, what we're really looking to do is provide esports with a growth backbone that can sustain itself. It doesn't require millions of dollars in VC money, uh, and obviously represents a reasonably low upfront cost for a startup. Um, the barriers of entry for creating a pro league are gigantic. So what we wanted, when we wanted to help esports grow, and obviously when we were looking to get into esports in business, uh, we thought about a new approach for delivering value, and that's the bottom-up approach. So basically this approach, um, it focuses on a much, much larger audience of gamers that has yet to be introduced to, to electronic sports. Um, reaching new markets represents you know, a huge opportunity for growth, both at a business and at an industry level. Uh, so by reaching out to casual gamers, for example, we expose esports, for example, to a mobile industry, gaming, uh, to you know, social gaming industries, those, those industries combined, it's more than $50 billion every year. So there's a lot going on that we're not really investing in when we should be, uh, where the, the big growth numbers are. That said, for consumers, the upfront and time energy and energy investment involved in joining a pro league, I mean, it, it's measured in years at this <laughs> point. You know, like good luck getting into IPL if you're just getting started, right? Mm -hmm. um, so most of, you know, not every league provides equal opportunity. Um, the best teams will usually stay at the top. So to change this, we've really come up with that bottom-up approach, which will focus on giving the rest of those gamers, that 99%, a, a platform to, to prove their worth and to elevate, the, elevate their game. That's, that's the big value there. Right. Really well said. Do you have anything to add to that, John? Uh, well, that was actually really well said. Um, <laughs> Because, again, that's something I've been talking about for some time. And, and I've used this analogy before, but when you, uh, if, and I may be too old, this is definitely going to date me, but if, if, if you look back and you remember the time at which Pele, um, you know, probably the, the world's most famous soccer player ever played, he played in, in North America, right? And it was, uh, oddly enough, in a company called, uh, in a, an organization called NASL, or North American uh, Soccer League, right? Yeah. And it was all about... The, the stardom. It was all about the media and, and filling up these huge stadiums. I mean, uh, the the New York Giants stadium, I think three of the biggest uh, crowds they've ever had were were to watch Pele play. And and that's great and all, and it, and it probably, it, it definitely, you know, the awareness of soccer in North America was definitely on the rise, but it didn't have any feet to stand on. And when, when the players went away, when the stardom went away, and when the money was being spent to such an uh, exorbitant amount that it, it wasn't feasible anymore, it couldn't sustain itself, there was nothing underneath of it to grow the sport. So it took another 15 years before we, uh, before we started to realize that you need people playing at the base level. You need little you know, nine-year-old kids and, uh, growing up you know, to being you know, high school soccer players, to college soccer players. Mm -hmm. Uh, to to get to the pro level, and for for a while, esports you know it had that because in the beginning it was all just about community. I mean, we didn't have Twitch, uh, you know, we had CPL and other other organizations, but in a sense, it was more it was still more very much about the player and about as many people playing as possible. And the the focus because of of streaming has been so much about media 
Um, and again, not that that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just now somebody needs to pick pick up the uh, you know where where others left off, and we need to create that base. And and that's what companies uh, like IGL and there are others out there that are trying to do the same thing. I just we just hope that through the experiences that we've had and through some other you know value adds that we're looking to add that we can even uh, elevate that even more and, and give give esports a true structure and something to build from. Well, Ted, do you guys have any fears of IGL kind of being seen as more of a, a farm system with your with your focus on amateur players and kind of that community aspect where you're seen as kind of a lower, less credible um, event or league compared to an MLG or an NASL where you guys are basically just, you know, the the minor league to the major leagues? Or is that something you're completely comfortable with where you want to be that, that big, huge community for the average player? So to answer that question, I, I kind of kind of have to zoom out just a little bit mm -hmm. um, and, and touching upon, you know, the idea that people who invest their time and money and, and energy uh, in new projects usually are very um, emotionally attached to those, to those projects. Uh, somebody who decides to open a new league probably will want that league to be the biggest league ever, the yeah. most professional <laughs> league ever, right? That's usually what, what you'll get out of that. Um, that's the way that we wanted to do it with our first prototype. Um, but what we realized later is that there is no point in doing that. IPL already exists. MLG already exists. There, there already is structure at the top, but there is no structure at the bottom. That is right. where the opportunity is. So it wouldn't make sense for us to kind of position ourselves as a pro league because why? There's no point. You know, we, we would just be wasting money and time. Whereas if we could position ourselves to be uh, a real sustainable base that people can just come to, come to as newbies, brand new beginners in, in esports, I think that being able to get those people to jump from an early adoption to a mainstream phase, to me anyways, as, as, especially as an entrepreneur, brings way more value than being able to just say we are a pro league versus an amateur league. Frankly, I could not care less about the, that, that specific aspect. Hmm. That said, being able to provide the pro leagues with a talent pool, a centralized talent pool, can you imagine how easily new players could finally go from zero to pro? That's, that's for, for me, anyways, that makes a lot more sense than just trying to replicate something that already exists. Uh, so in terms of positioning, it's definitely something that we did that we are not only comfortable with, but that is the vision. We really want to provide uh, a centralized pool of talent in the form of an amateur-friendly league that anybody can really get accustomed to. Uh, and that's funny because the idea eventually became more and more cemented throughout Founder Fuel when we were talking with high cloud people. Uh, one of the people on our advisory board um, Christian Beauclair, he's actually one of the evangelists for Microsoft. Uh, and he was, I was asking him, listen, I want to know what it takes for me to take you from looking at a game to playing a game competitively. That's what I'm interested in doing. Whether or not you're good at the game, frankly, it doesn't matter. I just want you to have fun. Uh, so the first thing he told me was that the first thing I, I do when I go on Xbox and try to play some game is I get a 15-year-old kid who's just screaming in my ears, <laughs> I get my ass handed to me. That's, that's not a good first experience, right? No. And game developers don't want that. They want their, their gamers and their players to really enjoy their time playing on those titles. So what we're doing is delivering a new value that pretty much guarantees through tiered ladders and, and different value adds, pretty much guarantees that people will not only have fun, but they'll have an opportunity to really grow and maybe even make a career out of it if that's what they want. It's just a matter of putting together that base and eventually seeing where that goes. Right. Um, do, do you mind if I interject real quick? Yeah, go ahead. So real quick, somebody's asking, and oddly enough, it's Beyond Gaming, which is a, a pro, would, which could be considered a direct competitor of what IGL is doing, but um, good folks over there at Beyond Gaming. Uh, they're asking what makes, uh, and I know I touched on this before, but um, I well said it. Um, there's a word that, that people are, are that would, you may skim past, and that's tiered, and that's what that's one of the differences. There will be many, we hope, um, but that is one of the differences that you're going to find uh, about what IGL is setting up 
uh, as opposed to what you'll find at, let's say, for instance, uh, game battles uh, for MLG. Uh, for example, if you go join a game battles ladder, uh, and this is no joke, you can be on a ladder with a thousand other teams all on the same ladder, and you might be on page nine and never see the light of day. That sure. doesn't uh, encourage activity, um, and it's really not meant there. It, it's not meant for that. Um, it's just literally a ladder. Come and join it. Uh, the top eight teams will continue to play while the rest of you just basically increased our user base. Um, <laughs> that's very much different than what what uh, and that's what not IGL's goal will be. No, it's not. It's not sustainable. I mean, it, it, there's a lot that they could be doing, but we hope to do that. Um, so that's one of the differences. You know, obviously there are others, but we're you know we don't want to share them all. Uh, you'll just have to tune in uh, for them. There was. Um, there was something else too. The the idea that there cannot be pro, you know, that we're not catering to the pros. That's really the key is that we're not actively going out and saying we're only going to go after the pros. We only want to be a pro league. It doesn't mean by any means, and I think you'll start to see a shift. And I've talked with teams um, that, that are, you know, managing, you know, as little as six players right now. They can't afford to continue to send some of their top players who are technically almost, you know, they're just right on that cusp, right on that level, they're about the 2%. They're not quite in the 1%, but they're at the 2% of those top players. They can't afford them to they can't afford to send them to all of these events. And so it doesn't mean that IGL won't have that offering for top top players because again, with a tiered system, there's going to be players at the top and there's going to be players that are a little bit more at the bottom, probably like myself. Um, <laughs> So that system alone, I think, will, will help um, create that structure where we will be, you know, where there will be some pros that play in our leagues. And I, and I certainly hope that we do. But the, the focus is giving uh, new players um, an opportunity to grow. And when we talk about new players, too, we talked about the social media and what, uh, you know, I, I've talked about this on other shows, too, is that our community is actually very small. Esports is... is very small compared to all of gaming, right? I mean, think there right now there, and I've used this many times, so some of you are going to hear it for about the fifth time. Right now, there's probably 14 people, 14 million people playing um, Farmville. 14 million people are playing a video game yeah. that we're not reaching. And these people are ultimately their competitors because they don't play the game. I mean, maybe they do just play the game to grow, you know, to grow stuff, but they do it to like get to the next level, right? So there's, there's competition to it. We need to reach across that, that gap, um, which is, is fairly small. We just, we haven't done it enough. We need to reach across that gap where a lot of gamers just reside and they don't know about this world of esports and start to bring them in. And I think that's, that's one of the main, that's one of the focuses that you'll see from IGL. And it's really just a matter of awakening the players, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, and you can't really do that with you know a high cloud organization like either MLG, IPL. Those guys will never do that because the risk involved in, I mean, I'm going to use the Farmville example because it's awesome. <laughs> Nobody's going to do that, right? Just because imagine MLG does that, that's it. They're, they become a laughing stock. Whereas a smaller startup that tries to invalidate the thesis that if we do esports for Farmville, that it will work the upfront cost is much lower, right? There's, we don't lose anything for trying. Sure, there are specific games that have nothing to do in esports, example Farmville, but there are <laughs> a lot of other games. I mean, Offensive Combat, number, first mm -hmm. FPS on, on Facebook, we're looking to do some stuff for them because, I mean, they've hit a, a million or so players in less than a week. That's a million players in a week. That's a lot of reach that we're not touching. That doesn't make sense. We need to get on that. And the only way to do that is through an approach that is friendly for the amateur. But at the end of the day, like, like John just said, it's not a direct uh, target. We're, we're not saying we just want amateurs. We're saying esports for everyone. That's really the message here. It's that anybody can get started at any point in time, at any skill level, and really get a lot of value from competing. And That's a good example that you touched on there was... Um, an established company going and trying to change that model and go to more friendly games. I mean, look at WCG when they tried to announce that, hey, we're going to shift, shift to mobile gaming, and everyone just looked mm -hmm. and said, what? Like, you guys are about StarCraft and CS. What are you doing playing games on cell phones? And they haven't exactly recovered from that sense. 
I mean, there's going to be flack for any new initiative yeah. at any point in time. People detest change, and that's not news, right? Um, I mean, just look at when, and this might be an unpopular thing to say, but um, I think Sundance was looking at new, uh, different monetization models for MLG, uh, and there was this one point where I think there was like a double, uh, people had purchased a, a, a membership and then we had to rebuy another another thing. for. That didn't work out, obviously, but people were, were just crying about the, the price. And I mean, that's a great thing to cry about. That's you're, you're totally right. You should be talking about the price being too high. But the fact is that MLG took a very unpopular decision and it moved esports forward because they were able to specifically test whether or not people are willing to spend $20 on what, whatever value it was. So, you know, being able to, to, to be flexible and agile in that fashion that you can do different initiatives and test them and iterate really, really quickly gives you the ability to come out and innovate with brand new things. Otherwise, there's no change. And if there's no change, esports doesn't go anywhere. Great. And, and going back to the WCG thing, um, and there's conversation going on in the chat about it. Mm -hmm. It may not have ju it, it may not have been the mobile gaming that killed it. Um, there, I'm sure there were other things uh, about it, but the idea that they took that step and they they offered it um, is a step in the right direction because there is no there is no denying the fact that mobile gaming has grown huge, and mm -hmm. if we don't tap into it, somebody else will. Um, and it's not to say that that's, I mean, we, you know, we haven't even talked about IGL taking that route. We're just saying that those are examples of markets that um, I, I think we just haven't tapped into enough or we haven't uh, found creative ways. It's not that people haven't tried, but there may be other ways. There may be creative ways to, to bridge those gaps between the people that are playing on their mobile, uh, probably during class at, at, in college, um, <coughs> Those that are playing console that have never heard of MLG, MLG because you'd be completely surprised mm. um, about how many of those there are. Um, I've talked to people that I see playing um, League of Legends in the. I take some cla design classes at a college, and I'll just walk up to someone who's playing League of Legends and I'll ask him, you know, uh, you know, do you do you check out like MobileFire.com? It's a website all about League of Legends, right? Do you know anything about? Uh, MLG, IPL, um, do you know who Riot is? I asked uh, one guy, do you know who Riot is? No, <laughs> no clue. Um, so just again, he just knows the points. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be That's so it. surprised about the number of people that have no clue what esports is. And... Um, and that, that's definitely something I think that everyone in esports can do a better job at to continue to grow so that the pie gets bigger and then we can all get a bigger piece of it. I mean, right now, every, you know, the pie is just one size and everyone's just eating, you know, trying to take a little bit more from this person, a little bit more from that person. The pie isn't getting bigger. So we need to get the pie bigger, um, I think, all together. And, and, and that will grow esports. And we'll all make a little bit more money and then the weak will, will die off and the strong will survive. It's just, you know, normal business. Touching upon that that pie thing, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I hear it all over, and it, it's true because we, we all want to grow the pie, right? The thing is that what I'm learning more and more is that a lot of people in esports don't yet know what they don't know, and and I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that. We're talking about mobile gaming as as a choice for esports. At the initially, this sounds like a terrible idea. I mean, there are no games that you could play on on your mobile and call them for, as esports, that's just not going to happen, that's fine. It doesn't have to be about playing the game in the same way that you're playing League of Legends. The two experiences are wildly different. You can't expect them to be the same. That said, second screen technology is booming. You've got new, I mean, Twitch TV is doing great with, their, with mobile. Their viewers are exploding on mobile. There are different ways to overlap existing markets and existing pies, if you will, with the pie that we currently have. And that's the way that we grow it. It's by doing overlap. When we decide to overlap and go to Facebook to do whatever initiative that we decide to do, we're overlapping on a billion plus users that we're not, nobody's touching ever, anywhere. There's no reason for us not to do that. So co-promotions, co-branding, you know, all of those things, they're the first step to kind of growing that pie. It's not just about doing and innovating ourselves. It's also about reaching out to the markets that already exist, that people are already investing money in, and this is pretty important because at the end of the day, esports is something that people don't yet know. And unless you can 
draw similarities with things that they do understand, you're not going to get anywhere. I mean, I, I spent three months basically trying to explain esports to investors. I mean, yes, they might have been 60 years older than I was, but they had no understanding of how can you play a game competitively now. This is not this is not serious. There's no way. <laughs> but when you would take a second and just tell them, hey, last August or what was it, last November, League of Legends finals, you know, 8.2 million people showed up, a million plus concurrent viewers, that gets them interested, right? Why? Because viewership is something that they can digest something that's easily understandable. So our job as IGL is not just about building a product, it's also about spearheading a new initiative for growing esports. That's that's the, the gist of it. Man, it's exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to explain it to the to the old man about how a game is competitive makes me think of my parents still asking me if I'm playing a game and saying like, oh, do you have the high score? <laughs> like, yes, I have the high my score. My co-founder will laugh at this Starcraft because too. we had this event uh, in the middle of Founder Fuel, which essentially was called Mentor Day, uh, which essentially gives you the advantage of the program. Uh, 120 mentors, C-level executives, investors, VCs, angels, you name it. Um, and there was this person who's the CPO, Chief uh, Platform Officer at Spotify, which you might know about. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, at Shopify, my bad. Um, and he, he knew about StarCraft. And he really knew about it because he's this hard, hardcore StarCraft player, knows about Twitch TV, knows about esports, all about it. And, you know, I was explaining it to him at a table of more than 10 people who they themselves had no idea what I was talking about. And the first thing that he decided to do when that event was over was run up to me and tell me, Dude, forget what they're saying. They have no idea what they're talking about. Just keep doing exactly what you're doing. You're doing the best possible thing. Just go <laughs> for it. So, you know, there, there's definitely awareness involved in this, um, but we're not yet there. We're still at the early adoption stage and even earlier. So there's still a lot of, I mean, there's infinite time in front of us. So there, the only way is up at this point. And I'm old. <laughs> I meant even older than that, like 60, you mentioned 60. I'm older than, I'm probably older than you think, but uh, talking about all of this, you know, I have a 15 year old son and he's been brought up on this and as much as I do this, um, I've been doing it for, a long, for as long as he's been alive. I have pictures when he was, I think, four years old sitting in front of a computer and I ju actually just pulled it out. Um, it was a really shitty computer. Uh, <laughs> sorry about the language. Sorry, but it was a really, it was a really bad want. computer. Uh, and he was playing uh, Quake in windowed mode. And I think he was maybe five, four or five. Um, but he's been brought up with this. And, and with all of that, as much gaming as he does and as much Xbox as he plays, he's still not familiar with uh, the whole streaming side of things. Um, the competitive side of things, and I've introduced him to it over over the years. But you know, it's gonna it, that. So just right there, it shows it's gonna take time to to get this message out to new people that are growing up. But I'm a perfect example that as I, you know, as my son grows up, for him it's like whatever. Yeah, it's esports. I know what it is. It's no big deal, right? So that's where we need to get, and it's definitely yeah. going to take time. It was never a focus in the past. Um, mostly because we didn't have the sort of uh, media coverage and content coverage that we have now, but it can certainly be a focus now. You know, so never be afraid. And I is, I'm, an, I'm a much older guy going to a college with a with a much younger crowd, um, and so I feel out of place sometimes. But I'm never afraid uh, sitting in class. You know, when people, you know, they ask you to tell you a little bit about yourself to tell people what I do, and they all like, what? That's the greatest job in the world? Are you kidding me? You know, and, and and the other day, actually, a girl was like, I've never heard of any of this stuff. She goes, my mind is blown. So my teacher actually <laughs> brought it up. We brought up Twitch, and we showed it. She's like, people stream this stuff? Oh, um, man. People sit yeah. around and watch people, other people play games. I'm like, yeah, oddly enough, they do. Um, <laughs> but um, so you just have to reach out, and the more that we do that, and that includes the, you know, those at the top, uh, MLG, IPL, which that's exactly what they're doing. When I... When IPL was on the front page of IGN, that was a huge step for esports. And I don't, think, I don't think people realized how big of a step it was because it was reaching literally across that gap and reaching a lot of gamers that really, as much as IPL and IGN were connected, 
there was millions of users on IGN that had no clue what IPL was. Mm. And uh, when IPL was then on the front page of IGN, that was awareness that was being made to, to people that had never heard of this little world of esports mm. uh, that we're in right now. And uh, we just need to continue to do that. And as we get older and as we have kids, we're going to continue to do that. And you'll see growth. But with all of that said, I mean, that's great. But if they have no place to play and they have no place to, 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 you know, to elevate their game, and we've used that phrase a lot. There's a reason for it. Um, then it doesn't matter. It's just going to be a bunch of people watching a very small group of people playing video games. Instead, the idea is to get a lot of people playing. So there's because there's some 13 year old kid out there in North America, who's better than the best Korean at StarCraft, but no one knows about it because he know, has no clue what esports is. You guys heard it here first. John said it. <laughs> yeah, well, don't quote me there's on that. Yeah. He's right playing there, on Jerome, the ladders. Jerome. If he's playing on the ladders, he's probably, you know, uh, he should be known. But you don't know, worry, you, we'll you get the idea. He's yeah, watching. for sure. And even like just what you're saying from that experience for the uh, younger generation in your tents, it's like the younger generation, like my students, I tell them, yeah, you know, I do casting, I do stream. They're like, what? That's so awesome. And yeah, it's, you know, it's building that audience, right? Yeah. I just realized that for most of this interview, I, my mic was muted the whole time. I've been trying to ask this question for the <laughs> longest time. <laughs> I was like, no one could actually hear me. Um, but I know that IGL, you guys are focusing on, you know, promoting the amateurs and giving them chances to play. Are there any plans for uh, monetization models? Can people, you know, will they be able to earn money from playing games on IGL? Well, yes, there will be um, a monetization model, uh, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, though at the moment we are most concerned with getting our minimum viable product right, um, you know, getting some assumptions invalidated, um, completing a pr preliminary beta website, to test the platform. I mean, there's a different, there's a bunch of different things that need to come to to come and fall into place in order for us to move forward. Same, and that includes eventual cash pricing. As right. of now, there is no no uh, no plan for cash pricing unless a sponsor is involved, as as usual. Um, once these things are out of the way, monetization and growth uh, will be our main focus, with a particular obsession uh, on raising capital to support that mm -hmm. growth. Um, so we are playing, you know, with different monetization models, ranging from, you know, your lazy monthly recurring subscription um, to a ticket-based, uh, more tri micro transactional model. Uh, so we understand that, you know, the gaming persona contains many different subcultures uh, and personas of their own, and that each different culture, uh, with each, has their own you know, affinity and, and preferences with regards to monetization. Not everybody wants to pay a premium. Not mm -hmm. everybody likes ads. Not everybody likes microtransactions. Uh, so, you know, in, as of now, we're really focusing on getting the product right, figuring out exactly what the value that we're producing is. Uh, and once that, that we do that and a critical user uh, mass is available, then there are different, you know, a bunch of different options that we could take from there. I mean, we could be selling data, we could be doing business to business only, keep it completely right. free. The world is our oyster as soon as there is a critical mass of users that we can put to use at that point. Uh, there are different implications uh, in esports when prize money is involved, you know, from ladder anxiety, as simple as that, uh, all the way out to payout tax issues. Uh, I mean, First of all, you tell a an investor that you're going to be giving away his money, and he'll tell you, "Forget it. We're not we're not going anywhere with this." There, that's one. Um, there's also the fact that the value that we create is not necessarily about making money. Mm -hmm. What we've realized is that for many people, it's all about playing the game and getting better. It's not about making money. Sure, the pros need to be making money, and this is. True. We we totally need the pros to be making money because otherwise there's no way for them to con to justify the amount of time that they're putting into this into this sport, um, and they also want to make this a career choice. That said, mm -hmm. for amateurs and for semi professionals, it's more about practice. It's more yeah. about meeting people. It's more about spending time. It's more about socializing. It's more about stats. There are so many different value adds that are more important than making money and. We know that from different failures out at the pro level and at lower levels. That's that's something that we know. Awesome. That's that's really great. Um, so, in terms of game choices, are you guys focused right now just currently on PC? Will you be expanding to the console market as well? 
So right now we're focusing on what we know, um, which is PC. Uh, we're really trying to, to prove the model works prior to, to kind of expanding, obviously, to consoles and whatnot. Um, but I mean, you know, the entire team was watching the PlayStation 4 unveil, uh, unveiling it that other night, and we, we realized how huge the implications of the new PlayStation were. Be able to share, to, to, to live stream right there and then in the middle of the action, that is huge for us, especially because now we have a conveyor for taking those console players and introducing them to a whole new world that is beyond what they're, what they're playing every single day. So right now what we're doing is we're focusing on AAA PC titles ranging from StarCraft, um, you know, mo any, all MOBAs. Uh, we're looking to really bring FPS back a little bit because, you know, CS has been a little bit on the low key. Um, Black Ops isn't doing as well as we want it to be uh, in the esports uh, section. I mean, they're doing great in terms of numbers uh, as a company, but for esports, not as much as we had hoped. Um, and as soon as we kind of make sure that everything is, is working and that we can uh, produce a sustainable business model out of it, uh, then the first thing that we'd like to do is push out to mobile because that is big, um, and obviously to consoles uh, as a developer on Xbox and on PlayStation. We already have um, a couple of conversation going, conversations going, uh, namely with uh, Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the doors are definitely open. We're just not there yet. That's awesome. I hope uh, you're able to bridge a lot of those gaps. Um, I have a question. This might just be for John, unless uh, Ayal has some secret children that he's not telling anyone about. <laughs> but um, John, I myself have two children as well. You probably noticed by the Sesame Street in the background over there. So how do you, uh, being so prominent in esports, how do you find time to, you know, you, t you obviously said all these things, all these hats you wear, right? Plus you go to school, you have children, you have a family. Um, I always find it, it's, it's a huge issue with balancing because I want to spend as much time as I can with my kids. I want to get my kids into esports and gaming as much as I, I like it. But right now, there's a lot of different things that I'm trying to balance. So how do you find this life that you're, all these hats you're wearing? One, uh, you have to not sleep. <laughs> I'm already there. Um, you have to be okay with only getting about five hours of sleep and, and, and working. The good thing is, is that, you know, even my wife goes to bed at like nine thirty, ten o'clock. And so in the evenings, a lot, a lot can get done if, I don't, if I'm not too tired. It, is, um, it can be difficult. I'm not a full-time student. I just take two, two design classes. Um, Really, the key is to have a wife that's patient. I was lucky <laughs> enough that I actually met my wife playing Quake uh, on nice. the internet. So uh, she understands esports. We we used to actually compete against each other in, in different with different different clans, as they were called back then. Uh, so that's that's good. Again, my son's grown up on it, so he understands that you know if I'm not around for a little while, that's that's fine. But then when I do have time, uh, and I do make time for for the family, I obviously try to to get the most out of it, but uh, it is difficult. There's no doubt about it. Um, mm -hmm. It is definitely difficult, but it, it helps to have a very patient and understanding uh, wife in that sense. You're lucky you met her while you were playing Quake. I showed my wife natural selection when we were first dating, and she almost vomited. So yeah. <laughs> oh, I've lost, uh, I've lost yeah. girlfriends because of the video games. There's no doubt about that, but um, I was lucky to find one through a video game, so that worked out well. It's good stuff. You're living the dream, John. Yeah. You did it. You did it. Yeah, I did it. I can die now. This is great. Men everywhere rejoice. I would play games with my girlfriend, but she's much, much better than I am. All right, guys. That's not, not very hard. Oh, laugh it up. Oh, snap. <laughs> um, that pretty much brings us to the end of the questions, but we still have the lightning round. Uh, before we jump into that, I do want to give you guys a chance to plug um, Twitter, Facebook, website, anything you're doing streaming, um, anything like that. John, if you want to go first. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, you'll probably start to, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, uh, it's ES underscore John Clark, and, and you'll hear obviously more about IGL. Uh, you'll hear a little bit about uh, the eSports Solutions um, project that I have going, uh, but mostly you'll just hear about eSports, um, hopefully. I, I don't talk a huge amount. Sometimes I get into other conversations with other old dudes uh, from eSports. Um, and I pick on the young guys, uh, so especially the console players. But that's uh, no, pretty good. Um, uh, probably that's about it. for shoutouts. That's about it. Cool. And El. 
Uh, I don't really do Twitter, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to get in there. What about your cloud score? Sorry? What about your cloud score? Oh my goodness. Let's not get into that one. <laughs> uh, but if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, uh, that's at Al Toledano. That's just my name. Um, you should follow PlayIGL on Twitter, though. We have uh, Michael Cohen, who's our wonderful PR manager, who actually creates really good content for you. So if you care about Twitter, like seeing some cool messages, give us, uh, give us a follow. Um, and expect an open beta for PlayIGL sometime late March, playigl.com. Excited. Fantastic. Awesome. And you're going to be at LAN ETS as well? We will be at LAN ETS and we will be at PAX. We'll be at nice. PAX, yes. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, uh, you've obviously seen the 24 episodes that preceded this one, so I will not bore you with the details of the lightning round. For the people in chat who have joined us for the first time ever to see the lovely John Clark and Eyal Toledano, the lightning round is 10 skill testing questions that will put you through the gambit of physical and emotional frustration. I ask that you answer the questions as fast as humanly possible. John, I will have you answer first as our American guest. And Eyal, as a Canadian, you will go second because it's the polite thing to do. <laughs> Isn't that what Canada always does anyways? Exactly. <laughs> these, these questions were not given to us prior hand. Prior no, they no, were not. Okay, great. I thought maybe I missed something. Okay, bring no, it on. No. Don't worry. Don't worry. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to play on, this. I'm drinking some Canadian beer here. Oh, that's actually yeah, one. That's, one. That's, yeah, that's actually a few that's penalties. Good. There's a few penalties for one of the rounds. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Uh, I have to play the uh, lightning round video. That gets Don't better work. every week. <laughs> All right, everyone. Question one of the lightning round, the gentleman from IGL, starting with John Clark first. Actually, there are uh, two penalties. Uh, number one, uh, my name is also John, but I spell it J-O-N, the correct way. Um, so you do lose a point right off the bat for having J-O-H-N. Damn it. Uh, as well. Do I gain I was... a point back because I'm older? Uh, no. There is no seniority. <laughs> more uh, years, more points. points. <laughs> more years, more <laughs> If anything, you should be wiser, and the question should be easier for you. <laughs> True. Uh, so you're already okay. at an advantage. And Eyal, uh beforehand, explained to me that uh, he was a Habs fan, so he yes. does have that advantage as well. So I do apologize in Such advance. Uh, first question coming in lightning hot. Your favorite dress last night at the Oscars? I didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> mm, I'm going to... Go ahead and guess that Megan Fox was there and go for a popular answer. Incorrect. She was not there. Damn it. Uh, but, John, you were correct with don't care. So, Damn plus God. one. Uh, so, now it's even. You're tied zero. Are you guys keeping score or do I need to do this? Uh, no, I will handle the score. Don't worry. Okay, good. It. I just want to make sure there's a clear winner. Sense. Oh, it'll, it'll be sure very clear. Winner. We call it straight down the line. Uh, question number two was a free point for Yal for being a Habs fan. Uh, but, John, you do have the chance to gain a point by telling me your favorite sports team? Don't, uh, say, don't say football. Don't say baseball, please. But, no, it's, it's actually the LA Galaxy of the MLS. Yes! Soccer! I <laughs> fell asleep a... while you were answering that. I, uh, I award that. you no points, and <laughs> Eyal goes up 2 to... Uh, sorry, one nothing. It's so unfair. Question number three. I don't even have to answer the questions, and I'm winning this <laughs> Esports Canada TV. <laughs> Question number three. A game from the past that, if it came out today, would be an esports sensation. Jedi Academy, no questions. I like how you got excited and answered before, John. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I really don't have an answer for that. No. Because oh, I, I was going to no. reach back and say Cubert or something. I would say <laughs> no. I there's nothing. I can't think of one. Mm -mm. All right, well, I will have to award uh, Eyal that point. Uh, it's now... Whew. Don, you're not doing good. 2-0. I, I can't beat my boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart play. I will award you a bonus point. It's 2-1, I believe. <laughs> uh, question number four. Um, for the American, I need you to tell me the first words of the Canadian national anthem. Oh, say. <laughs> Wait. I just guessing. Aren't those the first words of the American national Yes. <laughs> I was just, they're so similar that I thought... Hey, geez, we literally just replaced the word America with Canada, and no one has noticed. 
in all <laughs> 26 years. Uh, well, you actually just answered the question for EL because, EL, your question was, what are the first words of the American oh, National Anthem? Okay. Oh, say, can you see? Perfect. Uh, the answer was, oh, Canada. Damn, I was close. See, there's an O. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, you get a half point for that. Uh, it's, what, four to one and a half? These half points are going to screw you up, John. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be hard for you. I know, I know. I'm going to write that down real quick for the first time ever. Four to one. <laughs> <laughs> Question number five. The worst handle in esports? Oh, Meat man. sack. Meat <laughs> sack. <laughs> Meat Sack. That was his name. It was actually the most awesome, but also the worst. <laughs> meat Sack. I'll spell it. It's. I was. Meat. I was gonna go for like. Uh, I was like gonna go for for like the Beebs eighty two or something, but that takes the cake. Meat Sack. Really <laughs> meat <good>. Sack. <laughs> All right. When your opponent agrees with you, uh, I have to give the point to you. So it's four to okay. two and a half. C come back. Come back. Don't this tell is a come remix. Back. Question number six. Um, a country outside of North America or Korea who's doing esports the best? Germany. Mm. A country. Uh, Brazil. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, Brazilian booties. So four and a half. Oh, you deleted the score. There it is. Four, two, three and a half. Uh, Brazil was. Oh, my God. Oh, this is, he's coming back. Trailing by a point five there. Question number seven. <laughs> Finish this rhyme. There once was a man from Nantucket. Who shot all over a bucket. <laughs> I'm just going to give him that one because I can't follow that. Oh my god. You're going to have to keep that I can't one follow out. that. You can't follow that? Oh, no, and I honestly don't. I know it's in my head. But I, I, can't, I can't share it. I will give you a chance. If you tweet that to me at some point over the next week, I will retroactively give you a okay. point. Uh, but I have to give that to EL. Even though he swore, okay. he swore actually, uh, no points awarded to anyone. Question number eight. A movie is being made about you and your career in esports. What's it called and who plays you? It's called um, Just the Old Guy and Sir Scoots plays me. <laughs> yeah, this is a tough one for you to follow up. Oh my god. Um... You could do like a spin-off off of, off of the uh, social network. Like a, you don't get to 500 million gamers without making a few enemies or something like that. That could be cool. And who would play you? Oh, man. Uh, pick someone from The Hangover. <laughs> All right, uh, you had the... Galifianakis? <laughs> yeah, Galifianakis. Galifianakis. Yeah, 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 guy's name from Community. You should have picked him. That would have been hilarious. Oh, uh, that was the longest title for a movie ever, so uh, <laughs> I have to award John the points on that one. So he takes the lead for the first time ever. It's four and a half to four. Question nine: What are you going to do with all your pennies? We're gonna. John doesn't know about this. Shh. Oh. No, I don't. <laughs> you want to answer first? I mean, I, I have an answer. I think you'll go first, so I'll get that point next. I will spend them the same as I spend my eSports dollars. <laughs> and, yeah. I, I yield. I yield the point. He That's yields it. the point. Uh, in true Canadian fashion, yielding the point does actually award you half a point. Uh, John, you were not in the know that Canada has recently gotten rid of the penny. Um, so I award you half points each, I believe. Uh, whatever makes it a tie, Frank. I don't know. Just say it's 5-5. Five, five. So it's 5-5, five, five, guys. It's amazing how that happens every time. Question number 10. This is the final question. Um, I'm going to ask Eyal first, actually. 5-5, five, five, uh, one point on the line. Eyal, the business idea that you had, that you were either told that's a horrible idea, or you tried it and it failed, but you still stand behind that it was a fantastic idea. You know what? IGL is my first venture, but... Um, I was doing consulting for a company that was doing uh, nail strips, you know, like strips that you could put on your nails. Mm -hmm. um, and I was looking for an investor for the company, and I was told that was the stupidest idea that they'd ever ever heard, which is weird because it's it's a really good idea actually. <laughs> um, and we end up 
doing it anyways, and it actually worked pretty good. So that was oh, yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. John, your question. Um, I think same I Same thing? No, no, oh, not the same thing. Not the same thing. We wouldn't yeah. do that. Um, whatever climbing the ladder is paying you, uh, we won't double it, but will you replace Nick on the show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, depends on the time, but absolutely. <laughs> that is the correct answer, and I do believe you are the first American winner of a lightning round showdown, oh. so congratulations. congratulations. Can, I, can I chant USA, USA? Or uh, yes, you can. Okay, I'd rather not. <laughs> you can show. Last week, uh, our American offered to uh, have a flag and hold a gun on stream. So if you would, <laughs> if you have those handy. <laughs> oh, fantastic, guys. 6-5 uh, was the final score for anyone keeping track. Um, if you're on Twitter, please do tweet at John Clark and congratulate him on his Esports Canada TV victory. GG, John. Thank G -G. you, guys. <laughs> GG, no there's, I think there's a competitive esport in this lightning round, John. Featured <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, on I've said that you can make esports out of ya out of the Yahoo pool. If you've ever been to Yahoo, you can play pool. You can make an esport out of that. Trust me. Totally. <laughs> Let's do it up. Good stuff. So, guys, that pretty much does it for the show. Uh, thank you to our guests this evening, uh, John Clark and El Toledano from the International Gaming League. Please do follow them on Twitter, es underscore John Clark and El Toledano, if you can spell that out. It's on the. It's on the stream. They can I know, see but it. for our podcast listeners. Oh, that's true. We don't have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, EL, we will see you at Land ETS. You were yes. going to say something? What? Uh, no, I was just going to say, yet. You don't have a podcast yet. Oh, yet. I know. Yeah. We're lazy. Uh, so optimistic. I like this. Good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely see you guys at uh, Land ETS, though. We're going to shake some hands. Hopefully, uh, do some good stuff there. Yeah, we're excited. And we'll, our next show, just to let the viewers know, we're going to be doing a, a live taping at LAN ATS. So we hope to have a lot of really cool people who will be at the event, a lot of big names and stuff. So uh, that's what we're looking forward to next week. And when's the next episode of Climbing the Ladder, John? Uh, Tuesday. That's tomorrow, actually. Should okay. be an interesting one. Um, it's You're not going to see your, you know, a bunch of famous names but these are people well actually one of them is very famous uh, <laughs> you'll just have to tune in but um they're photographers in the esports oh, world and oh um, nice they they kind of work behind the scenes but they take some great pictures they get used everywhere and sometimes they get used without their permission so it should be good uh, it should be definitely a good conversation about that side of the business in esports very nice uh frank who do we have for guests upcoming not next week but the week after Oh, the week after uh, the LAN ETS, we have William uh, LaFrancois from LAN ETS uh, to come back and kind of give us like a little close down on, on LAN ETS. Uh, along with him, we have Kevin uh, Katu uh, from Clarity, uh, the professional caster also trying to move into pro gaming. Uh, and then following that week, this is two weeks from now, but uh, we also have the UBC. Uh, is it UBC? The, the They do the LAN in um, Victoria for, or in British Columbia. So... We're going to have Adrian Faxnorp and James Choi. Fantastic. Everyone, if you could go to esportscanada.ca and join our forums, join the conversation, and help make esports in Canada a thing. As well, you can follow us on Twitter at esports underscore Canada, facebook.com slash esports Canada, and this VOD will be put up on YouTube right after the show, youtube.com slash esports Canada TV. Um, thank you to Project X out of Calgary. is going to be our representative for the Esports Canada Alliance, so congratulations. We didn't have a chance to get to our notes there in the rundown, but they weren't anything too, too important, so we'll save those till next time. Uh, thank you for watching, and we will see you next week. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Take care. Cheers.